Hello, this is uh, Beth Wooster, our ESEA Federal Programs Administrator, and myself, Kirk Russell, Title I Director and ESEA Assistant Administrator. Welcome to Preparing for the CARES Act ESSER Fund subgrant application. From the United States Congress, the CARES Act ESSER Funds Public Law Number 116-136. All right, we're gonna walk you through the CARES Act application. And the first page you'll get to is the overview. To get to the application, first of all, you're gonna to have to go to year 2020. Even though we're moving into year 2021, this is a 1920 grant. So you're gonna to have to go back to the year 2020. And then down toward the bottom of available grants, it's gonna say CARES Act ESSER Fund. 6996 and you'll hit the create button to get started. Then once it opens up, the overview page comes in. This grant is good till September 30th of 2022 and it can be postdated if you have expenses starting as early as March 13th of 2020, clear up till September 30th of 2022. The allocations and contact pages. You first um, shows up in allocations. Your district allocations are shown here. No action is needed on this page unless the LEA is going to release their remaining funds to NDE. If so, there is a checkbox at the bottom of the page that you must save and then, um, then it's directed uh, and released back to NDE. contact page has room for us to um, well, let me let me talk about first of all you'll see an, a new set of boxes up at the top we have been informed that the government will eventually be switching over to a SAMI number which stands for system for award management managed identifier currently the grant is only showing the DUNS number for the district um, and that that will work so please make sure to include on this page contact information for your authorized representative who is the superintendent or the approved designee. And this page and information is required. Okay, the next tab over is the program information tab. The first box that you will come to is allowable uses. There are 13 allowable uses with the CARES Act ESSER funds, and they are listed right here. This page is for the, dist, the, the public school only. So what the public school is wanting to spend their CARES Act funds on, they will, you'll choose at least one, but you could choose up to 13. Any of them that you select, you will be choosing when it comes to the budget, you're gonna be matching these same codes for um, codes on the budget detail page, the function codes. So um, if you choose that you're only going to do things with technology or if you're going to pay for some staff that you normally could, you know, like you could do some professional development because that falls under the Title II grant, you would select uh, number two. You would also, oops, I just went back. You would also, <laughs> select uh, technology. There's uh, mental health and services. There's, I, you can read through them, so we're not gonna read them to you, but any of these are allowable uses. And so you'll just select which ones you want, select the checkbox. Once you select it, a text box is gonna open up, I believe. And you'll write, is that right, Kirk? Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, and you're, you're gonna write a, a brief um, explanation of what you're planning to do there. Then you'll hit save at the bottom. OK, 
Okay, the next tab over is intent and purpose. Each LEA must answer six questions in regards to the funds and their usage. Question six asks the public LEA whether they are providing equitable services to the participating non-public schools that are located within their LEA uh, boundaries. For a yes, um, then there will be three additional questions asked in regards to the non-publics. If, if it's no, their three questions will not appear. And the non-public questions are how the LEA will, will provide those services, so. Okay. If you have non-public schools, the next page you will fill out is the non-public schools page. Any schools that are within your boundaries will show up on your grant. So for the example we have here, there are three non-public schools. For our example, two of them wish to participate during the consultation. They said they wanted to participate. One of them said they did not. So you check the boxes, whether they want to participate or not, hit the save, and then they're going to calculate on the next page. Okay, this tab is um, program information, non-public school equitable participation. Um, what do I say? This page is a formula page to determine the Equitable Amount of Cares Act slash ESSER funds available for equitable non-public schools. The LEA enrollment numbers will be pre-populated in box one using the 2019-20 fall membership numbers provided to NDE. The total non-public enrollment numbers based on the information provided on the previous page will appear in box two. The total non-public enrollment numbers K through 12 are based on information provided on the previous page will appear in box two as well, I'll repeat. The amount that must be budgeted for the non-public equitable services will be calculated and will appear in box six. There are two check boxes to indicate that the consultation form and the proposed activities are uploaded for each of the non-public schools listed and participating. And the bottom half of this page, um, or the bottom portion of this page also has three selections for uploads. The first one is the consultation forms for each participating non-public school, and there is an up, you know, a choose file, upload. Um, the second set of uploads is the consultation forms for each non-participating non-public school. And the last one are proposed activities for each non-public participating school. This can be one attachment with each individual non-public schools activities that are to be funded based off of their needs listed. And an Excel or PDF version of the document is allowed. And I would recommend naming the schools when you upload the files, naming the name of the school if you have multiple schools so it's easier for us to know exactly which ones we're opening. If you're doing an Excel file for the what they're doing, you could do one page if you're doing um, each X Excel file could have a, a, a page per non-public in case they change their mind or they add things later on, you could just keep adding to it. So that might be an idea. All right. The next tab is the staff and equipment tab. Um, the staff pages are like our other grants. The instructional staff goes on the instructional staff page. That is going to be any instructional staff that is actually working with students. They are teaching students. The non-instructional staff page are going to be, it could be for coaches. It could be for anybody that is not working directly with students or, or doing the instruction. And there is a drop down and it has all of the allowable um, choices of, of staff that would be allowable in any of the different um, grants. Uh, you'll also mark the percent that they are paid with the CARES funds. 
The operational equipment page is just like our normal operational equipment pages. You will list any equipment in the location of where it's going to be, the number. So it'll figure out the total, it'll calculate the total. And there'll be a box per, per, up, or per uh, item. The capital assets are going to be those items that have an individual cost over $5,000 and those go on this page. And those items would be budgeted in the 700s column on the budget. Budget detail page. The CARES Act ESSER funds application is designed and required to connect as Beth has shared for you previously that we need uh, the choices under the function codes for the public schools to match those that you selected on the allowable uses page for both public and non-public uh, schools. The first section is for the public LEA um, and they are to select allowable uses and your choices will range from one to 13. In the second section, um, which is stated the non-public CARES Act ESSER funds, uh, are used for to be funded and those function codes run and the numbers run from 14 to 26. For each fun function code activity chosen, the applicant must then in indicate the anticipated total costs and then break out the cost by the major object codes. If you need additional entries, um, there's the box to add more budget rows. Uh, let's see, the system will provide the indirect cost rate for each district on the budget pages. If chosen, the system will calculate the maximum indirect cost amount available for budgeting. Please note if budget includes operational equipment, capital S assets, this amount will be subtracted from the amount allowable um, for the indirect costs as required by law. Kirk, I'm going to just point out a couple of things I see on this. Okay. If this were to come in like it is right now, we would return it because they chose supplies 08 and they actually need to select non-public supplies because it's in the non-public section. Yeah. So the 08 supplies actually goes up with the public instead of just that's not the non-public code. They all, all the non-public codes, oops, sorry. All the non-public codes will say non-public in front of them. The other thing, oh, I keep touching things, sorry. <laughs> um, the other item I see that could be a problem is in this example, there is non-public administration budgeted, but there is no public administration. And you cannot have just non-public administration. If you are doing public administration, the equal portion of non-public administration can be budgeted, but this would be something that would be returned. You cannot have just non-public administration and especially not that amount. And, you, and all of the codes that are in the lower section have to say non-public. Sorry, I just saw that. So <laughs> this would be something I would return the grant for. Okay, our bud budget summary page, there's um, really nothing to do on the page. It does categorize it. And so what you will see is you will see the public um, allocations from the pr previous page, as well as you'll see the categorized funds for the non-public year. And the total amount, of course, will show um, on the lower right corner of the spreadsheet. And on this one, it's been fixed. The non-public has been moved, or the administration's been moved up to the regular, so it's a different screen. So, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, assurances and GEPA. Actually, Kirk, I may have you talk about this one because okay. of the GEPA. You know better than you can yeah. explain it here. Yeah, not a problem. So the um, first first page is assurances and you'll note uh, they're highlighted in blue for us. Um, you are re to review and you are agreeing to um, the assurances for 21st century, IDEA, McKinney Vento Homeless, uh, Perkins, Title I-C Migrant, and then all the other title programs as well. Um, the lower two-thirds of the box are the new CARES Act ESSER fund um, 
assurances. So the district superintendent should read these assurance statements and click the box below to, to agree to all of them. At the uh, end of the assurances is the organization approves button. Note the button will only be displayed to the authorized representative. And once the assurances have been agreed to, it is not necessary to repeat this step for amendments or changes later in the year. Okay, CARES Act and ESSER funds, GEPA information. In order to receive federal funding, the LEA must comply with the requirements of Section 427 or GEPA, which stands for General Education Provisions Act. On this page, there is a link that will take you to that um, Section 427. It'll describe um, what it should look like um, for a GEPA statement for those of you that have not used one in, in any other prior grants, previous kinds of grants. Um, it does require an upload of your GEPA statement. The LEA, the grantee, is to describe the steps the grantee will take to ensure equitable access for overcoming barriers for gender, race, color, national, national origin, English learners, economically disadvantaged, disability and age, to and to and to participate in the federally assisted program for students, teachers, and other program beneficiaries with special needs. All right. The submit page is just like our normal submit pages. Once you get done with the application, you will run the consistency check. If there are any errors, they will show up in red in the top left corner. Once you've run the consistency check, if you decide that you then need to get back into the grant, it is gonna be locked down once it owes, um, all the errors have been fixed then it is locked down. If To open it back up, if you wanna change anything, you will have to hit the unlock application button. Um, and then you'll have to run the consistency check again after you have made any changes. After you have submit, after you've run the consistency check, then you can hit submit. Okay, for amendments, um, either um, you know, once the uh, grant has been approved, we find out that uh, there needs to be an am amendment on your end and changes need to take place. Um, you need to first, um, we suggest you first, before you go and open the GMS CARES Act, we suggest you check out the review summary and look over the um, input, the data, um, a short description of, of what is wrong and why it was returned. We also try to individually send, as consultants, we also try to individually send a normal email back and we use that contact list um, a lot um, to also suggest and explain to you um, besides the grant itself. In order to make changes to the applications, you'll need to start out with the pages that need to be unlocked. To do this, go to the page lock control and select unlock and save. Make sure you, ha you get a save page and then you're good to go to um, give us that amendment description and get started with ch making changes. Okay, Kirk, I'm gonna have you talk about the reimbursement request, please. Okay, so again, um, we know many of you have, have worked into grants management system. Again, we took about three or four screenshots here. Again, at the GMS uh, access select, you're in 2020 year. You come down to find your CARES Act ESSER grant. And you come across, rather than open, you're going to, um, or your bookkeeper, whoever, business official will uh, click on the payments tab, payments blue button which then will open you up to um, a page that you are getting ready to create a new reimbursement. So you'll again, uh, highlighted in the very middle, middle of the page, you need to hit the next create new request button, which then opens up into the normal pages that um, 
you'll recognize for, for reimbursements. A couple of things that um, Beth and I and the other consultants um, had forgotten, didn't really check into some fun functionality, couple of uh, buttons on this page. So we're gonna cover that first before we'd actually you know, get into the reimbursement. Um, the first uh, radio button there is um, labeled object code summary and it says show budget summary and it's a yes or no. So when you're, when you're completing this expenditure uh, and object co code portion of the reimbursement, um, sometimes it'll ask you or you'll, you feel like you'll get in here and you'll need, oh, I need that budget summary time. So if you click yes, um, this page will open up and that budget summary will pop up with, with you on this page to assist you in completing the expenditure object codes. And then secondly, um, we caught it in test. We hope it's gonna work open tomorrow with the grant. Um, but the other handy uh, functionality is the, to remove the blank rows from the display uh, down below. So many times people, um, now the example shows you they're in the 100s to 300, 4, 5, 6. There's very few not used. But if you're only in the 100, 200 object codes and you use the yes, uh, we could eliminate some of the other empty uh, spaces there in the expenditure object code for you. The bottom part portion um, of this reimbursement request, it's a new requirement um, for completing this CARES Act ESSER grant. Um, we're gonna ask that, um, we're, we're always there to ask questions. We know this one may stump you a little bit. Don't hesitate to reach out to your consultant, but basically on a reimbursement, per reimbursement request, you'll see your public amount column. And again, the choices are listed there as far as allowable activities. So you, you're allowed to be able to put in the amount you're requesting in let's say reimbursement one. And the same if there's any for non-public, please fill out the columns. I, we think it'll save and we'll calculate and, and try to keep a year to date for you. Um, so that as you approach that final reimbursement request, um, you, may, you may not have as much work to do for um, the totality of what your grant fund uh, count was. Make sure you calculate and save the pages. Um, we'll also remind you that if you um, try to hit the submit button without an upload of documentation to us, you should throw an error on this page. So make sure that um, uploads are um, also attached. And if there's something we should know about, the right above the table is the add comment to NDE. Please click on that, a narrative box will open and share with us um, any brief description. Um, and because we do the same, we do the same for you when um, and if we need to return a reimbursement request. The reason we have added this chart is because we are expecting that we're gonna have to report on how districts spent the money. We know how you're budgeting it, but then that doesn't always follow through. So the reason that we're doing this is we have to actually report on how the district spent the money. So those function codes where you're budgeting it, it'll be that you're gonna be, that's where that um, showing, clicking the button where it says show budget summary, it shows exactly where it was budgeted. And sometimes that helps when you are going to fill out this chart on the bottom. And then these are the consultants that are going to be reviewing the grants this year um, by ESU. We've pulled our whole federal programs team. So um, if you find your ESU that you're located in, it has the consultant that will be reviewing your grant, their email and phone number. So you can contact them if you have questions. And then I am the final reviewer. So we're all listed here. And that is it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks so much. Thank you.